Oh, hello. Hey, come on over. I got something to show you over here at the jig board machine. Now, one thing I want to point out with this machine, uh, it, it's a bit more accurate than, than, than many other standard machines. So you got to be a little bit more careful and, and uh, uh, pay a little more attention to detail. Now, one of them is centering your tool. And uh, what I got, I got a piece of paper in here, and uh, so, and let's say that's where the hole's going to be, a little wiggler there. Got the machine locked, and we're going to put a hole there. Okay, I'll take this up. Now I'm going to show you the boring head we're going to use, and bring it over here. And uh, this is a, a standard more boring head. It, it uh, is 50 thousandths uh, per revolution of the dial. And it also has a uh, vernier here that is in tenths of a thousandth. That would be off the diameter. Okay, so the t when you adjust this, the tool moves into this plane. And um, the uh, sides have flats, and I'll, I'll show you what, um, why that is. Let me get this out. We'll put this in. Okay. Okay, going to bring it down. Now, oh, I gotta lower this a little bit. That'll, that'll be good, right there. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this around so the tool's facing me. It's just easier. Now I'm gonna take a square, and I'm gonna put it across the vertical way and bring it against the head, the flat on the head, and adjust the head just so it's square with the square. Okay, now that's pretty good. Now I'm going to bring the tool down, and you can see that it's right on. Okay. Now, you can vary this a little bit. Um, when you're cutting, there'll be a little bit of torsion and it'll cause the point to fall behind the center line. So you can mo move the tool where it's mounted, leaving this square, and put a, a little bit ahead of the center line. And sometimes that's good to do if you're having finish problems. Okay. So I wanted to show you that. That's uh, a good way to align the tool. Now, one of the reasons we're doing that is we need to remove the tool to sharpen it. And we want to get it back. And I can show you kind of a neat thing here pretty quick. Let me get this. Let's see if I can get this monster up here. It's pretty cool. Now. We'll get that. We'll get this big old indicator. It's pretty easy to read right on the tip of that. Kind of like that. Come on around and let's have a look. Oh, I'll, I'll put a little bit of load on that indicator. And you see, just move the tool a little tiny bit. And it's moving. Um, a couple of thousands at the point there. And we just want to try to tighten this up. That's why we're hitting the line. Now I'll get this out of the way and I'll show you what I actually use. And uh, I have this steel target here with a series of dots. And um, they're drill imprints, see? Hopefully you can see that. And 
I find that really easy to set the tool on. You know, I can move it ahead a little bit and just, it gives me a good picture of where it is. Of course, this isn't exact, but it, it's just helpful, you know, to, uh, to be able to uh, repeat, get, the, get everything to repeat as best you can. Okay. Now, over here, now I set this up here my tool and cutter grinder. Now I got a boring bore in here and I make these, you know, I bend them and braise the carbide in it. So when I need to sharpen the tool, yeah, I can bring it over here, set it up and, uh, and grind it back, get it sharp again. It's easy to set up simply if the tool's already ground, can use the square, set it up like that, set up the side the same way. If you want to change the angle, you can use the scale here. Okay, and I do that often. You have to change the angle of the tool to suit the material. And sometimes you're working on very expensive things. I've, I've certainly worked on things that I can't afford myself, and you don't want to screw them up. Okay, here's, here's a, a boring tool I made, and I use carbide blanks, braise them into little shank. Now, with the V-block here, I can grind the face of the tool uh, easier than leaving it in the collet. I'd really have to jack this head around to uh, grind the face uh, like it's set up there. So I, I pull the tool out, slip the, this V-block in, and you can see it's facing the wheel. And I can set it up at angles or whatever I want with a square or a protractor, using the scales on the machine. Okay, that's how I grind my tools. And it's very economical. Um, these are high shear tools, and we're going for a two-step finish. And so uh, I use the tool basically for the last two cuts. The first finish cut is the base for the last. And that's been discussed quite a bit, but I can, you know, uh, demonstrate that probably better uh, running the machine in um, later videos. Now, one of the things about this uh, more boring head I'll show you. Right, let me get this in gear. Oh, it doesn't have a whole lot of travel. So I make uh, boring tools for larger holes like this. And uh, Moore has a kit, an old kit, that used high-speed steel tools. And this is uh, sort of modeled after that. I make this myself. I got this relief cut here so I can get the wheel behind it and grind it. So a tool like this will keep the head centered and uh, more in balance. Now, if you're used to a regular vertical mill, one of the things you'll discover is that you can use longer boring bars and run the boring tools faster than a, than a standard mill. And that's gonna be fun to demonstrate later, I think. So there's a lot of cool things coming up, but I just wanted to kind of uh, touch on a couple of those basics. And uh, maybe I can point out a couple other things about the jig bore that uh, might be... <laughs> Interesting. Now, most machines, like a, a vertical mill, you got you got to get a caliper. You know, you don't have much room. You have to move the knee or move the table on a regular vertical mill. It's different than this because this has non-influencing table locks. 
So you can move these movements and get them back exact. But like on a, like on a regular uh, vertical mill, I mean, you got to somehow get some calipers in there and measure that. And that's pretty tough. I mean, you could knock somebody out with this other end of this caliper. So, so we want to do things a little cleaner than that. And uh, so we'll, we'll check our holes with dial bore gauges. They're much safer and better. Okay. So, well, I think I can come up with another video, maybe on some details, but I want to get to cutting holes for this thing. And I think that's what you folks want to see. This thing moving a little bit of metal, and it's a very friendly machine. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, it says in the manual, you can do light milling with it. And you'll find if you, if you do anything the machine does not like, it will tell you. It's a very vocal machine. If, uh, if you're using like an end mill that doesn't like it, this thing will shudder. All 4,000 pounds of it. So, okay. Uh, Till next time, thanks for tuning in.